إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يتع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله كتاب الله Indeed, the most truthful of speech is the book of Allah. وَخَيْرُ الْهَدِي هَدِي مُحَمَّدٍ صلى الله عليه وسلم. And the best guidance we have is the guidance of our beloved messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. وَشَرُّ الْأُمُورِ مُحْدَثَاتُهَا And the worst of affairs are those things when you invent into this religion of ours. وَكُلَّ مُحْدَثَةٍ بِدْعَةٍ And everything when you invent into this religion is an innovation. وَكُلَّ بِدْعَةٍ ضَلَالَةٍ and every innovation is misguidance and it leads astray. Every going astray, every misguidance is in the hellfire. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, we spend a lot of time, a lot of energy, and even a lot of money chasing dreams. The dream job, the dream family, the dream home, the dream car, whatever it may be. We think bigger paycheck means more happiness. A bigger car, or a bigger, a better car, a bigger house, high social status, that this will give you the happiness you need to live a happy life. Ibad Allah, we are warned about this in the Quran. Allah says, Alhaqumu takafir hatta zurtum al maqabir. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says what means rivalry in worldly increase distracts you from the remembrance of Allah until you come to that point we will all come to, till you come to meet your grave. So you're buried under the earth. And then you are questioned. How many of us fall into this trap? How many of us fall into sin? Missing prayers because of competing for more worldly increase. Engaging in riba, in interest and usury because of more worldly increase. Just to have more in this dunya. Fighting in the pursuit of this dunya. Allah says, إِنَّمَا أَمْوَالُكُمْ وَأَوْلَادُكُمْ fitna." وَاللَّهُ عِنْدَهُ أَجْرٌ عَظِيمٌ Allah says what means your wealth and your children are only a trial for you. Wealth can be beneficial. You can do good with it. You can spend it in good ways. Even for some enjoyment which is halal and there's no problem. But it is a trial because many people who are touched with wealth end up constantly just pursuing it more and more. Whereas Allah with Him is a great reward. يعني paradise. A reward that will last forever and never fade away. A reward that will be given to you ta'ala, and you'll have no anxiety, no fatigue, no depression, no sadness, <clears throat> no old age, no illness, just a perfect life. Have you ever thought about the results of all these worldly efforts? Have you ever thought about them and how they would benefit you? <laughs> Allah, He said, كَأَنَّهُمْ يَوْمَ يَرَوْنَهَا لَمْ يَلْبَثُوا إِلَّا عَشِيَّةً أَوْ ضُحَاهَا Allah says what means it will be on that day that they see it. As though they had not remained in the world except for a morning or an afternoon thereof. That one day, 50,000 years long, this life you're living, even if you get to 80, 90, 100, 110, 114, 119, even if you get to that, you're going to look at this life and this dunya, and it's going to seem just like it was a morning's worth of time. That's it. Yet we're putting all our marbles in this basket, all the eggs into this basket. The lavish homes, the fancy vacations, 
They might be a temporary worldly fix. They might make you happy for a second. They might make you content for a day, a week, a month, a year. But then it gets old and you want to do more things and you want to change things up. And you're just into that cycle now, running on that wheel. But dedicating time and effort into something that lasts forever, for eternity, makes more sense, doesn't it? A child will tell you that forever is more than one one. A child will tell you that a 100 billion is more than 100. So even them, they get that concept. So if we really believe in Jannah, then why are we putting more of our energy and time and money and resources into this life when none of it goes with us to our grave? The house of our Prophet Hassan, he's the best of mankind وسلم, his whole house was the size of our bedrooms. Or maybe even smaller. Not the master bedrooms either. His whole house was that size. There was no mattress that, was, got, in, that got a, a pillow top and a pillow with feathers in it and all these things. No dressers full of clothing. And This was not how he lived. So I said, if anyone deserved to live comfortably and nicely and lavishly, it was him. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Simplicity, and he was the best of mankind. But our homes, very large, more bedrooms than you got, pe- than you got, you know, people for. Big dens, big yards, everything. Is that wrong? No, it's not. If you do it in a halal way, because the Prophet ﷺ said, every one of you is entitled to a spacious home. But you've got to look at things in perspective, my brothers and sisters in Islam. You choose the dunya or you choose the akhirah? This is the question as we approach Ramadan. And this khutbah is to get all of us, including myself, (coughs) to prepare. The Sahaba used to prepare for five months for the next Ramadan. Bi'ibnillahi ta'ala, if we live to see it, and there's no guarantee, even the healthiest, strongest, youngest one here, there's no guarantee that he'll see tomorrow, let alone 34 days or something, because we're near the end of Rajab. But if we see it, where's our preparation? If they used to prepare five months for the next Ramadan. So we have some days and we need to start to reflect. Have you ever stopped for a minute to consider building a house for yourself where it matters? To build a house for yourself in Jannah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمْنُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ يَهْدِيهِمْ رَبُّهُمْ بِإِيمَانِهِمْ تَجْنِي مِنْ تَحْبِهُمُ الْأَنْهَارُ فِي جَنَّاتِ النَّعِيمِ دَعْوَاهُمْ فِيهَا سُبْحَانَكَ اللَّهُمَّ وَتَحِيَّتُهُمْ فِيهَا سَلَامٌ وَآخِرُ دَعْوَاهُمْ أَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ Allah says what means verily those who believe and they do righteous deeds their Lord will guide them through their faith, their iman well, iman, iman, faith, belief is not just a statement and it's not a belief in the heart. There must be, as we see, الصالحة, the good, righteous deeds. Under them will flow rivers in the gardens of delight, in Jannah. Their way of request when they want something will be, Subhanakallahumma, glory be to you, Allah, O oh Allah, the one who is perfect in every way, and salam, peace, safety, security from every evil. That will be their greetings. And the close of their request will be, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Praise be to Allah and thanks be to Allah, Lord of the Alameen of all that exists. This is a Jannah Allah has prepared for those who believe and do righteous deeds. ثم قال الله إن المتقين في جنات وعيون ودخلوها بسلام آمنين ونزعنا ما في ما في صدورهم من غل إخوانا على سرر متقابلين. لا يمسهم فيها نصب وما هم منها بمخرجين. Allah says what means truly the muttaqun, those who have taqwa, those who fear Allah, those who keep their duty to Allah, those who are conscious of Allah, so they put a barrier between themselves and Allah's punishment. Meaning by ta'a, by obedience to Allah and His Messenger وسلم, It will be said to them, enter into paradise, enter into Jannah, into peace, into security. And we will remove from their breasts any deep feeling of bitterness that they may have. So they will be like brothers facing each other on thrones. 
No, severe, no sense of fatigue shall touch them, nor shall they ever be asked to leave it. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, he narrates that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu said, يَقُولُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى أَعْدَدْتُ لِعْبَادِ الصَّالِحِينَ مَا لَعِينٌ رَأَتْ وَلَا أُذِنٌ سَمِعَتْ وَلَا خَطَرَ عَلَى قَلْبِ بَشَرَ Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he narrated that Allah azza wa jal said in this hadith Qudsi, I have prepared for my righteous servants, my righteous slaves, what no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, and what can't even occur to the human heart. The best of designers and imaginary people, they can't even come up with anything that will closely be what Jannah will be. What you see of beauty in this dunya, what you hear of beautiful things in this life, what you think is so amazing will be trash when you compare it to Jannah. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah, He gave us the prescription in the Qur'an. He said, وَمَن يُتْعِ اللَّهُ وَالرَّسُولُ فَأُولَٰئِكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ وَالصِّدِّقِينَ وَالشُّهَدَاءُ وَالصَّالِحِينَ وَحَسُنَ أُولَٰئِكَ رَفِيقًا Allah says, what means? Whoever obeys Allah and His Messenger. Here, a clear proof of denial towards those who say that I will take the Qur'an, but I will reject the Sunnah. A Sunnah which is wahi. What we have of how we pray, how we make hajj, how we fast and all that, this is wahi, this is revelation from Allah. It came through the tongue of the Prophet wasallam. This is why Allah said, وَمَا يَمْتِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَىٰ إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيٌ يُوحَىٰ The Prophet ﷺ, Allah said, what means? He does not speak of his own desire. He is only giving you a wahi, a revelation that was revealed to him. So Allah said, وَمَن يُتِعِ اللَّهُ وَالرَّسُولُ Whoever obeys Allah and His Messenger, then they will be with those upon whom Allah has bestowed His grace. Who were they? The Prophets. You can be amongst Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam, Prophet Isa alayhi salam, Prophet Musa alayhi salam, Prophet Nuh alayhi salam, and the likes of them. In the highest of Jannah, you can earn that. Allah did not say, the Prophets will be there and you will be here. You could be with the Prophets, you could be with the Siddiqeen, the first to believe, Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, radiallahu anhu, the best in this ummah after the Prophet sallallahu Umar radiallahu anhu, Uthman radiallahu anhu, Ali radiallahu anhu, Mu'ad radiallahu anhu, Abdul Rahman ibn Awf radiallahu anhu, and all of the companions. You can be in their company in Jannah. You can be with the martyrs, those who died at Uhud, defending the Prophet ﷺ. You can be with the righteous ones. These are the excellent companions. Allah has made this a destination that is reachable. But you got to want to want it there more than you want it here. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, the worries and the anxieties are dominating our lives so much that we miss prayers and we never shed a tear. But we'll shed a tear over losing the stupidest of things from this dunya. Something you can replace at that. We, we miss some prayers for some worldly reason. We delay hajj for some worldly reason. We delay or skip an opportunity to give charity for some worldly reason. This is what has become of us. So question yourselves every day now, till Ramadan comes and through Ramadan. Have you forgotten the meeting, the appointment with Malik al Maut, with the angel of death? Because when he comes for you, ain't no hiding. You can't negotiate with him. You ain't gonna be telling him, give me five more minutes, let alone give me a second. When he comes, he comes. That death from which you are fleeing from, it's going to find you. Ain't no way to turn it away. You cannot stop it if it's meant for you by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in His qadr. Have you prepared for that? Do you remember that? Do you reflect upon that? Or have you forgotten that day? Will come to each and every one of us. Have you forgotten that when you are buried, even as a Muslim, even someone who was upon Tawheed and Aqeedah, you will be sat up in your grave and shaken and asked, Man Rabbuk, who was your Lord? Ma Deenuk, what is your religion? Man Nabiyuk, or Man Hadha Rajul Allahi Bu'atha Fikum, or who was this man who was sent to you? And the righteous one only who did 
live according to that way will be to, able to say, Rabbi Allah, wa dini al-Islam, wa dini Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He'll be only to say, Allah is my Lord, Islam is my religion, and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is my messenger and prophet that I follow. And then it will be said, wa ma yudrika, aw ma fa'alta. What did you do in your life? And the righteous one will say, Qara'tu kitab Allah. I read the book of Allah. This book that collects dust on these shelves, that collects dust in our homes. They're there because we think it's protecting our house. With ayyad billah, that's shit, really. If you think that just it's in your home, that's going to protect it, you're upon some wild out thought. You're going to be able to say, if you want to be able to say it, you've got to read the book of Allah. Memorize it, understand it, implement it. Qara'tu kitab Allah, wa amantu bi, and I believed in it, wa saddaq. I affirmed it to be the truth, yani I acted upon it. Because I knew what it promised would come to me. And what it said I would go to if I disobeyed Allah and His Messenger, I know that I would go to it. So you act in your life in a way to avoid that. Have you forgotten your appointment with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? That He will question all the believers. May Allah make us from them. And He can either expose you to all of the people, all of mankind, or He can draw a veil over Him. So that you're one-on-one -on -one with Allah, He screams from all the people. And you reveal your sin after sin after sin. And you think you're doomed at that point. And He says, you concealed your sins in the dunya. You concealed the sins of other people. So I'm going to conceal your sins today. That could be the meeting with Allah. Or it could be one, لا يمضر إليكم ولا يزكيكم ولهم عذاب أليم And it could be, or it could be the one where Allah, He does not want to look at you. He doesn't want to talk to you. He doesn't want to purify you and you'll have a painful torment. منهم المصبل والمنان والعاقل والديه From them, the one who drags his pants below his ankles out of arrogance. From them, the one who reminds people of his favors. From them, the one who's disobedient to his parents. Do not forget the meeting with Allah. He will question every one of us and we can't lie. We can't say, I forgot. It's all written down. Have you forgot the, me the, the time when you see, we'll see the mizan, the scale come out. The deeds we do, they're abstract to you. They will be made into weights and weighed on this mizan, on this scale. The surat, the bridge over Jahannam. Every believer who wants to go to Jannah will have to cross over that bridge. They say it's, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, it was finer than a, a hair, sharper than a sword. Slippery. It's got hooks on it that can grasp you and make you fall into Jahannam. This is a reality. Reflect upon it and never forget it. We have the opportunity for high stations of Jannah, as we mentioned, to meet the Prophet and be with him and other prophets and the companions <clears throat> and the righteous ones and the martyrs. And most of all, when you think you're in good company and you're living in a pearl of a home, of a mansion, and you can look at any bird and ask for it to come down to be any meat you desire to eat, and you have fruits that are so large, like the pomegranates, that make the ones we have now look like a piece of dust. When you have that in Jannah, you're drinking from rivers of wine that don't intoxicate from rivers of milk, which are pure, water, which is pure, honey, which is pure. And you think you've had it all, then you get called to a day. A call comes out from Jannah. Salaman alaykum. Peace be unto you. And the inhabitants of Jannah, may Allah make a sunnah, they say, Allahumma anta salam, wa minka salam, tabarakta ya adil jalal wa You are peace, and from you is peace. Blessed are you, O honor, O, o one, do of honor and all majesty. And then he'll say, Aina ibad al ladina ata'uni bil ghaybi wa lam yarawni. Where are my servants who used to worship me, even though they did not see me? Where are they? They used to pray and bow down their face on the ground, the face which is a sacred part of the body. In this dunya, people mocking them and laughing at them. Yet they would still do it. People ridiculing them, why are you going to the masjid to pray, pray in your home? And they still would do it. Giving in charity. Even though the people say you're losing that money, knowing that Allah would reward them. Where are my servants who used to worship me in the life of this dunya, even though they did not see me? This is the day of increase. Yet many of us still choose to not strive for Jannah. Distracted, absorbed in this dunya, losing sight of our purpose. You can have fun. 
in what is halal, and there's a lot of it. You can have a good life, but don't lose track of that purpose. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسِ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ Allah did not create jinn or mankind except to worship him. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah said, بَلْ تُؤْثِرُونَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةُ خَيْرٌ وَأَبَقَى Allah says, what means no, but you prefer the life of this world while the hereafter is better and that which remains. So indeed, the akhirah is better for us. And we need to use our time in this dunya to work for it. So prioritize this. Prioritize Jannah, making it to Jannah, pleasing Allah on top of prioritizing this dunya. So why do some people prioritize this dunya? Some do it to be cool. Imagine you don't go to Jannah because in this life what you cared about was pleasing other people. Neglecting your prayers because it may not look cool to your friends or your family is going to harass you or some people might mock you or ridicule you. Imagine losing Jannah because you didn't want to live according to the Quran, the Quran and the Sunnah, fearing ridicule and poverty. So you engage in what was haram even though Allah said, فَإِن لَمْ تَفْعَلُوا فَأْذَنُوا بِحَبْلٍ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ Even though Allah said in the Quran what means, <clears throat> and if you do not give up riba, interest, usury, and the likes of it, then take notice of a war from Allah and His Messenger wasallam. So we're exchanging all of that for all of this. You do not wear the hijab or the jilbab because it's out of fashion. Or now in some places, it's in fashion and that's the reason for wearing it. You spend hours listening to music, staring at magazines, looking at TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. All of this junk that has done nothing for the most part, but distract us away from Allah, get us caught up into siyasa, into politics, and made us more at the whim of the shaitan. This is what it's done. When we sit down and logically think about it, what are we doing? Another reason people may answer why they prioritize this dunya over Jannah, they say, I don't have time. There's not enough time. Our Prophet ﷺ, the Sahaba radiallahu anhum ardahum, were much busier than us, but they never fell short of their duties to worship Allah, nor to remember Allah. Allah swore by this time because you can't get it back. He swore by it because it's valuable. By the token, by the age, by time. Surely man is in a state of loss. Except for the one who believes and does righteous deeds and he enjoins the truth. Calling people to the haqq. Your family members, your brothers, your sisters in Islam. Your neighbors, Muslim or non-Muslim, calling to Islam. Enjoying the haqq. And then you enjoy patience because people might make fun of you. People might harass you back. People might ridicule you. People might threaten you. But you endure that with patience. This is time. The truth is we're not busier. But we've forgotten our goal. We've messed up our priorities. The pleasures of this dunya are nothing compared to that of the akhirah. So why then have we neglected and abandoned those duties that will get us permanent, eternal bliss and happiness? We can't give it to ourselves. It has to come from Allah and it ain't in this dunya. قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم نعمتان مغبون فيهما كثير من الناس The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said there are two blessings many of the people lose out on الصحة والفراغ good health and free time good health you're able you're capable you have the ability to do for your masajid to do for Allah to do for Al Islam to enact the Sunnah and the likes of it No, you spend your time chasing this dunya. You have the free time before you get the spouses, the children, the, the older parents you have to take care of, etc. You have free time, but we lose out on that benefit. Then we're in a chair, we can't get off of it. We're in a bed, we can't get up from it. And what are we saying? Oh, I wish I had done, I regret that I did not, I wish I had time and I, I, I could go back and I would do things that are going to help us at that point. Prefer the after over this dunya, you will be happy in both. 
أقول قالي هذا استغفر الله لي ولكم الله يغفر لكم Brothers, if you can move forward, barakallahu feekum. That way those coming in have a place to sit. Jazakum akhir. Alhamdulillahi thumma alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah alladhi hadana li hadha wa ma kunna lana ahtabiya lawla an hadana Allah. Alhamdulillah ghafir al-banubi jami'aha illa al-shirka bih. Wa salatu wa salamu ala nabiyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi. Wa man attaba'uhum bi ihsan ila yawm al-deen. Amma ba'd. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, if you find yourself constantly panicking about this life, prioritizing this dunya over the akhirah, then it's time to strike a balance. First and foremost, you need to make that niyyah in your heart. Makan al fil qalb. The place of your intention is in the heart. You don't say it with your lips for anything. Not for salah, not for wudu, not for hajj, not for anything. The place of your niyyah is always in the heart. It is not on the lips. So make that niyyah. If you're still breathing... Today, we know Yom Qiyamah will come on a Friday. The sun didn't rise in the west. It rose in the east. You're still alive. You have time. The doors of repentance are still open and it's not too late for all of us to enter Jannah from its eight gates. Bab al-Salah, the door of the prayer. Bab al-Sadaqah, the door of the charity. Bab al-Rayyan, the door of the fasting. Bab al-Walidayn, the door of being good to the parents. Also, Tabu'ah al-Jannah. This is the best and highest of the doors, of the doors of Jannah. So, how do you do this? I'm telling you, it's very simple. You've got to just make that niya purely in your heart. Start revolving your life around the prayers. Not your prayers around your life. You revolve your life around your prayers. You want to go out, do some shopping. You look at the time that it takes to get there, how much time you usually spend there, and when the next time prayer time is, and where you'll be able to pray it. Do this as much as you can. Because that prayer is what keeps you in this deen if you've accepted tawheed. كَمَا قَالَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ الْعَهْدَ صلى الله عليه وسلم أَنْ أَحْدَ الَّذِي بَيْنَنَا وَبَيْنَهُمَ الصَّلَاةَ مَنْ تَرَكَهَا فَقَدْ كَفَرَ The covenant between the Muslim and the non-Muslim is the prayer. Whoever leaves it has committed kufr, has committed disbelief. And this is within its time. This Quran that we memorize but we don't understand what is Allah saying, He says what means. So woe or humiliation be to those who establish the prayers. Or according to some of the Mufassirin, it means a river or a, 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 a stream in the hellfire, in the deepest of the hellfire, where a drop of it, if it fell in this dunya, would scorch the earth. للمصلين, for those who establish the prayers, why? Allah said in the next ayah, الذين هم عن صلاتهم ساهون, those who, they delay their prayers from their prescribed times. So it's not just enough to say you pray. We need to encourage ourselves, our family members, our kids, even in the schools. There's great accommodations, many of them will make. You just have to ask and pursue, have that pure niyya. To ensure that you give everything its right, your deen, your health, your body, your sleep, your family, your work, and so forth. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah says, كُلُّ نَفْسٍ ذَائِقَةَ الْمَوْتِ Every soul will taste death. وَإِنَّمَا تُوَفَّوْنَ أَجُورُكُمْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ فَمَنْ زُحْزِحَ عَنِ النَّارِ وَأُدْخِلَ الْجَنَّةِ فَقَدْ فَازِ وَمَنْ حَيَاتِ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا مَتَاعُ الْغُرُورِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says what means. Every soul shall taste death and only on the day of resurrection will you be paid your full recompense, what you used to do. And whoever is removed from the fire and admitted to Jannah, that is going to be the successful one. Ain't the guy with 50 degrees on his wall, nor the richest person in the world, nor the one who had the most property, nor the one who had the biggest family. It'll be the one who is saved from Jahannam and enters into Jannah. The life of this world is only an enjoyment of deception, a deceiving thing. It is. So if you're still breathing, Alhamdulillah, it's not too late. Begin now. Establish your prayers correctly. Kama sallam Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, pray as you see me praying, so establish your prayer that way. If you go to hajj, khudu anni manasikukum, take from me your hajj rights. Make hajj only with what you have a proof that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his companions did. Establish your prayers. Make a daily habit of reading the Quran, even if it's one page, two pages. Make it a daily habit. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, 
Learn the actions of the Sunnah, the lessons from the life of the Prophet ﷺ. So detailed because we said it's wahi. It's revelation from Allah. And Allah has protected it. Have iman. Work righteous deeds. Take small consistent steps. The most deeds, the deeds most beloved to Allah, adwamuha wa qal, are the ones you do continuously even though they may be little. You will enjoy productivity in this world and enjoy the next life in Allahi, in Jannah, inshaAllah, al firdaus al a'la kaman. Allah says, Jazaahum anda rabbihim jannatu adin in tajri min tahtiha al anhar, khalidina fiha abada, radi Allahu anhum wa radu an, thalika liman khashia rabbah. Allah says what means their reward with their Lord will be Adam, paradise, gardens of eternity underneath which rivers flow. They will abide therein forever. Allah will be pleased with them and they will be pleased with Allah. That is for who, whom fears his Lord. Who fears his Lord. Jannah is not for one day. It's not for a week, it's not for a month, it's not for a hundred years. It's forever, eternity. Ever and ever. You will never die. You will not be sick. No anxiety or sadness or depression. Everything that you could have imagined will be so minuscule compared to what Allah has in store. May Allah make us from them. Mm-hmm. That day, other faces, yani Allah says what means, other faces that day will be happy, pleased on account of the effort they put in the earlier life, in this dunya. To those who do good, Allah will give good. Jannah wa ziyadah. The chance to see His face. To see His face as He reveals it in Jannah on that special day when He calls the inhabitants of Jannah to a meeting. So keep your eyes on the prize. That prize is Jannah. Choose it over this dunya. You will be content with this life and definitely happy in the next one. And again, seek good in both. Because the Prophet ﷺ most commonly, he will recite the dua, رَبَّنَا آتَنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنًا Oh Allah, give us good in this life. It's not wrong to ask for that. وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنًا Give us good in the hereafter and save us from the torment of the fire. May Allah make us of those who prefer and prioritize the akhirah, the next life, going to Jannah over what this dunya illusion gives us an illusion of what it has to offer. And may Allah make us firm upon it and from those who enter the highest of Jannah, Allah makhlil al-Muslimin wal-Muslimat, al-Mu'minin wal-Mu'minat, al-Ahyaat min hum al-Amwat, inna ka anta sami'un qalib al-Mujib al-Da'wat, ya muqallib al-Qulub tabit quluban ala deenik, ya muqallib al-Qulub tabit quluban ala deenik, ya muqallib al-Qulub tabit quluban ala deenik, Rabbana atina fi al-Dunya hasana, wa fi al-Akhirati hasana, wa qina a'zab al-Nar, wa akhir da'wana, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, wa sallallahu ala nabina Muhammad. وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين